Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this blue and green winter landscape on a 60 by 20 stretched canvas. It's already been primed and I have the following colors and brushes that I'll be using for this painting today. However, I want you to know that you can use whatever you have if you don't have all the same supplies that I've got here today. Just paint along. Starting off with titanium white, bright aqua green turquoise, then we have phthalo cyan blue, and the following brushes, number three, round, and number two, rigor, or long liner brush, a one inch mop brush. I'll be using a few different mop brushes, a number 20 flat brush, and a 14 filbert brush. So I hope you guys are excited to learn how to paint this today. I'm gonna to be showing you a lot of different techniques and tips and tricks that are gonna help you grow as an artist. So if you're ready, don't forget to hit subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started. Now I forgot to mention um, this one brush here I'm going to be using just for painting the background uh, with, and this is just a large number 50 filbert brush, but you can use any large brush you have. It doesn't have to be a filbert brush like this. And the very first thing I'm going to do is wet the canvas a little bit with some water. A little bit of water on the canvas will help me blend my acrylics out. Okay, the first color I'm going to take is my turquoise and I'm just going to start blocking it in, crisscrossing, brush strokes, just randomly. You can apply yours wherever you want or add them where I'm adding them. I just want a combination of turquoise and phthalo blue. Okay, now I'm going to go into my phthalo and I'm going to start adding it here in the top right corner. And slightly overlapping into the turquoise. I'm going to take one of my dry mop brushes and I'm just going to lightly blend out some of these streaks. Just adding or applying a few little circles. Okay, so I'll leave it just like that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is dry this off. Now that it's all dry, I'm gonna take my number 20 flat brush, get it just a little bit wet, and I'm gonna come in and load my brush with a little bit of the blue. And I'm gonna start back here and slide my brush side to side. And then we're going to start to come underneath and pull back to the left. And then back over to the center. And I'm going to make longer sweeps. 
side to side. Take a little bit of water and more paint when you need to. Bring it out a little bit wider right here. I'm going to add more blue over top of the blue, making it darker and darker here along the edge. I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush with the blue and I'm going to add a waterfall right from here on an angle. Place your brush on an angle, pull down and drop. And then I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise and a little bit of white. Wiggle it slightly just to mix it up a little bit and then I'm going to go over top and do the same thing. And then right underneath. Add a little bit more turquoise and white. Tap, tap, tap to make it look like a splash. And then very lightly pull up from either side. And let's pull a little bit over top of the water here. And then when we get to right about here, let's pull and drop another little waterfall. I'm going to use a little bit more white this time to make it show up a little bit better. You can create these little ledges or your waterfalls, wherever you want. Just make them a little bit shorter each time. You decide how high you want them to be or how low. So now I'm gonna just wiggle along here, wiggling in a little bit more of the white, the turquoise, And I'm going to take some more blue and add a big waterfall down here. I'm going to turn my brush this way now and just pull in some more blue. Doesn't necessarily have to be straight up and down. You just want to cut in to create a little bit more lines. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my number 14 Filbert brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. 
And I'm gonna take some white. And I'm gonna add a sun right about here. And then I'm gonna soften around the outer edge of it. So you can add a little bit more white to your brush. Having your brush a little bit damp, adding a little bit of water will help make your paint, these rings around the sun, more transparent. And now I'm going to use my little round brush for creating some peaks in the clouds. Take a little bit of white and I'm just going to start wiggling in sort of on an angle here. I'm going to add a little bit more white as I get closer to the sun. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, turquoise, and white and start gently pushing and blending around just for some larger clouds. So you want to leave a little bit of a dark space in between the clouds that you want to layer. That way you get the light and shadow. I'm going to come back up here with my flat brush and a little bit of white and add a little bit more highlights here to the base of the waterfall. Tap, tap, tap for a little bit of a spray, pull, and then side to side so it looks a little bit misty like that fine, fine spray you get. And then dab on just a little bit more. And these ones are shorter waterfalls, so you're not going to get that big, big splash like you would with one like this. Okay, now I'm going to add another highlight to the clouds. A little bit of blue, turquoise, and white. More white this time, though.
I'm just going to come in here, just gently push and tap. to get the edges of the clouds the brightest. And then soften if you need to. The idea is to make the little clouds bigger and bigger and bigger. For some perspective in the sky. It opens it up and really creates a mood. That combined with the highlights and shadows. I'm going to go over to my flat brush again and we can now come in and start adding the next layer. I'm going to take some turquoise, pull and drop, we want to be able to see all the colors so we're just building it up from the dark blue to the turquoise and then some white. So get just a little bit of white on the end of your brush and then start to pull and drop. You can make your waterfall as big as you want. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more white just on the end of my brush here. And I'm going to start to add a little bit of highlights and some foam. sort of zigzagging and wiggling around. Okay, I'm going to start to come in with a mop brush now. And I'm going to start to build up some rocks and hills and bushes. And the first step is tapping it to load it lightly into the blue. So you don't want to add any water to this brush, not for this step. The only time you're going to add water to it is when you're completely done using it. And then of course you want to wash it out in water. Okay, once you load your brush up, we're just going to gently push and tap. And I'm going to add, make it look like this waterfalls even more on an angle perspective wise and tap some little bushes over part of it. Then I'm going to start to come around the edges like this. and add some more. Wherever we have a waterfall 
even if it's short like this, we want to build the height up above, right? So adding a little bush on either side slightly above it will help create that uh, feeling of height. Now this brush is starting to get um, pretty saturated and it's losing its shape. So now's a good time to wash it out and switch over to a clean and dry one. I'm gonna start adding some highlights on these bushes with a clean and dry brush. And I'm gonna take a little bit of white and turquoise Just a little tap. And you want to just apply a little bit on one side of the bush. leaving the bottom of it dark. And then now I've got a larger mop brush, so I'm going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of turquoise, tap into both. And as the waterfall here is closer to us in the foreground, uh, the bushes will be as well. So I'm just going to start tapping in for some larger ones. We'll layer over with just a little bit more of the blue right down there. And I'm going to come in on this side. And tap in a big tree. And this brush is losing its shape, as you can see. Once they are used a lot, they lose their shape. So it's a good idea to have a few on hand that are ready to go and dry and clean, especially for a larger painting like this. So I've got another mop brush. This one's uh, one of my bigger ones. But you can use any size. And I'm just going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, tap to load and I'm going to start adding some highlights.
So remember, you just want to add it partially on the darker base. Careful not to cover the whole thing because you need the dark needs the light and the light needs the dark. They both balance each other out. I'm going to add a little bit of a snow bank here on the side. Just by tapping the same color, a little bit of blue, turquoise, and white. Okay, I'm going to take my round brush with a little bit of white and I'm going to add another layer to our sun here. I guess it could be a moon as well. I'll let you guys decide what you want yours to be. I'm going to brighten some of these highlights. I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to add some snow covered rocks here on the side. I'm just making little bumps like this. different sizes. Then I'm going to go underneath them with some blue. This will give us a little bit more contrast and shadow. Time for another mop brush and a little bit of highlight. Taking just a little bit of white and I'm kind of squashing my mop brush down a little bit. So I can make it narrow on the end of it and then control the amount of highlights that I'm adding. And I'm just going to go around the other side here, just adding some white. And I'm just going to gently pull and sweep after I've added some like this. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight down here as well. And on some of these branches so we can still see the blue base some turquoise
you can see all the colors. It's time to use my liner brush or long rigger brush. I'm going to get my brush wet. So I'll just show you. You're really going to use a lot of water with a long liner brush. Then I'm going to go right into green and blue. I've got quite a bit of paint on here and I'm going to come in right from here and start wiggling some branches. I'm going to add some here too. And my paint is still wet underneath, but I kind of like that because I'm pulling some of that paint off and it's giving me some lighter colored branches. I'm going to bring a branch that comes right out over, reaches out to the waterfall. You can add a few branches to make these look like little trees back here as well. And then I'm going to take some white and just add little highlights here and there. Okay, and I'm going to come over and add another layer of uh, leaves and snow on here. So I'll go into my blue with a clean brush and I'm just going to tap over part of this and then green and white. Push and tap to load. Now 
That way it looks a little bit more layered, right? I'm going to add another highlight right here with white and my flat brush. Pull and drop right down. Okay, I'm going to just use a damp mop brush. Take some white evenly apply it on my brush and I'm going to start right here where the waterfall is and I'm just going to go around in little circles creating a haze and then bringing it down here but the mistiest back there. Okay, now I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm going to add a few little sun rays, a little bit of water and white. The same amount like we used with our mop brush so it looks, looks transparent. And I'm just going to pull Just go around. And give it a nice glow. Okay, this painting is all done. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and you learned a lot of great tips uh, and tricks today about color mixing, applying brush strokes and brush techniques, building up from dark to light, adding shadows, midtones, and creating an interesting perspective like this. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today for this one, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Take care. Bye.